In this video, I'm gonna give you a perspective of saving money that you probably haven't heard of before. I could just give you a ton of different money saving strategies that helps you save money little by little, but you've probably already heard of them. You might've even tried them, but even if you haven't, I have several other videos showing you how to do that. This video is gonna be a little different. The advice in this video is gonna focus on helping you save large amounts of money at a time, which is gonna save you a lot of time and frustration. And of course the advice in this video is coming from my own experiences and what I wish I knew earlier because following this advice is going to remove the need of you even trying to figure out how to save money in the first place. Because it will maximize the amount of money that you're able to save which will allow you to spend your money more freely without it making a difference. What's up? My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth where I show you how to save money and make more money all while bettering yourself every single day so you can live life on your own terms. Let's get into this video. One of the most profound pieces of money advice that I wish I knew from day one is to actually understand what you're working for. This is something that goes over most of our heads because we're so into what we're doing. We're so busy being busy, putting in work, paying bills, and going back and forth and repeating this cycle that we forget the purpose of working. That's why they call it the rat race. It's like you're running on a hamster wheel that never stops. And even though you're putting in the hours and you're putting in the work, your finances are going nowhere. It's not necessarily because your job isn't paying you enough, and it's not that you're working a dead-end job. It's simply because you lose intentionality when you forget the purpose you are working in the first place. And I'll tell you, the purpose of you working is not so you can keep paying bills and living the same lifestyle over and over again. The reason you're working right now is so you can one, survive, but two, have a bigger, brighter future. But when you get turned down for a promotion, when your work bonus doesn't come through, or when you get denied overtime, that's easy to forget. And once you forget, it's easy to fall into autopilot mode. You know what I mean? It is what it is mode. And that's when you lose your foresight you once had over your future. That's when your passion goes down and then you get stagnant. My point is, if you're ever unhappy or you feel stuck and unappreciated because you aren't growing or advancing in your career and years have gone by, but you're still making the same amount of money you were making years ago, even though all the prices around you were just going up, it's time to do something about it. There's no time to be saying, well, it is what it is. There's no time for that. I was in this situation before, but it was brief because I woke up to the fact that I was living in a reality that I didn't like. And when I don't like something, I do something about it. Basically, my base pay remained the same for almost two years, except a lot of times I had to work mandatory overtime. And they would hold the overtime over my head, almost as if to say, I should be grateful for being forced to work overtime because it was more money. Well, I was still running on that hamster wheel, sweating hurting, not getting any kind of rest. And despite how well I was doing, I didn't get anywhere financially. I would just work and go home all the time. And before I knew it, I forgot why I was working because it just became so normal just doing that. Work home, work home. See, we work hard for our money. We spend God knows how many hours a week just to make a living, yet we still somehow end up in a situation where we're limited with what we can do with our money. That's because when you're on autopilot, there is no being proactive. There is no wisdom. And what ends up happening is the money that you work so hard for ends up getting spent on things that mean absolutely nothing and don't add any value to your life because that's just the normal thing to do. And what that creates is a lifestyle that is reliant on you to stay exactly where you are, stuck. Or at least that's the illusion you'll find yourself in because when you're stuck, that's the uncomfortable spot, right? And so when you get back into a corner, it's easy to want to run to your comfort zone and that's brand new cars. That comes with car payments. That's brand new furniture you didn't pay cash for. That's maxing out credit cards. That's letting your comfort zone eat you alive all because you forgot the purpose of you working. You literally can't build a future living paycheck to paycheck all because your luxuries have taken too much space in your bank account to the point that they're causing you to just barely get by. With that said, sometimes you just need to take a leap of faith. You might need to relocate because that change of scenery can shift your thinking and give you a fresh start where you can actually start with the lessons that you learned from your experience of all the financial mistakes you've made from the beginning. See, this time you won't be starting from scratch. And this next point right here is actually extremely important because again, no one really thinks about this. Pay attention to the cost of living. Whether you're just about to get started on your own or you're relocating from a place you've spent most of your life, pay attention to the cost of living. 
I mean hit up Google, make phone calls, and really understand the average rent or mortgage in the area that you're living in or moving to. Even if you aren't moving to a different city or state, you gotta pay attention to the cost of living in your area because I guarantee you, you're spending even more than you should be for your basic living expenses in your area. That could be the difference between you paying $1,200 a month on rent and $1,600. That's $4,800 a year that stays in your pocket, which I can guarantee you is a lot more than you'll be able to save than holding off on the Starbucks coffee. That's how you save money. You figure out how you can spend hundreds of dollars less a month by using less expensive options. Like I told you earlier, when I didn't like my last job, I did something about it. I moved to a different state. It's about 36 hours away from where I used to live and I was pretty much forced to make a decision on where to live in a state that I never stepped foot on while I was thousands of miles away. But I was fortunate to have a friend who was already living out here and he told me that for a nice single bedroom apartment, I could expect to pay $1,800. I was like, nah, bro, I ain't paying 18, nothing. You talking crazy. So that's when I started my research and looked heavily into the cost of living over here where I live now. And that's something I wish I would have done a better job at doing when I moved into my first place. So anyway, I quickly found out that the average rent in my area was $1,000. So I was like, you mean to tell me the average rent over here is $1,000, but my bro over here is paying $1,800? Something ain't adding up. So I'll admit, it did take me a while to find a nice place that was under $1,500 because that was the max I was willing to pay. But I found one and it was a brand new luxury apartment complex that was $400 a month less than what my friend was paying. How about that? When he heard the news, he was like, yep, that's Reggie. I always find the cheap way to do things. Talking about some man, you so cheap. I was like, nah, bro, you just bougie. Don't make no sense. You knew you knew I wasn't about to pay no $1,800 for no single bedroom apartment. Done lost show everlasting mind. Instead, I got to be the first person to ever live in my apartment because it was brand new and it was just as nice as the $1,800 ones. So to put it into perspective, we both had the same salary except he had to spend more money a month on his apartment. You get what I'm saying, bro? So when you take that into account and you factor in car payments compared to me who didn't have any car payments, that was over $1,000 a month that I got to keep in my pocket compared to someone else who had multiple expenses. So when this happens, it's frustrating because you start to resent the fact that you work so hard yet you have so little money left over at the end of the month because you done spent all this money on things that you don't necessarily need. But now you're forced to work even more and pursue higher pay just so you can sustain those things and so you can have a little extra money at the end of the month for some breathing room. This is why the choices you make right now are so crucial, bro. Which is why this piece of advice I'm about to give you is extremely important and this is widely ignored, which costs people a lot of money and it even can affect you decades into the future. So you definitely don't want to miss out on this. Save your future self some money. Bro, you have to do this because no one else is going to do it for you. And I'm not talking about filling up your savings account so you have some money five years from now. I'm talking about having a good portion of your money invested so you can have money 30, 40, 50 years from now. This doesn't have to be difficult. And this actually goes back to the beginning of the video when I said we can't afford to forget about why we work. Just imagine putting yourself through several decades of work only to have absolutely nothing to your name when it's time to retire. So you can't retire. Then imagine working well into your 70s, not because you want to, but because you have to, when you know good and well you should have retired years ago. Then imagine your health declining because of it, because that's definitely going to add some physical and mental stress on you. So I don't want your imagination to scare you. So to avoid all of that, I'm going to tell you exactly how to make this thing easy. If you haven't already, you can talk to your HR team at work about the investment options that your job offers. And they can hook you up. They'll set you up for success. And most of the time, this is a 401k or a 403b. And let me tell you something. You would be surprised at how quick this money grows. I have two of them, and this is out of sight, out of mind money for me. But when I do check it periodically, it grows by thousands at a time. So imagine where it'll be 30 to 40 years from now. That's a good starting point. And then from there, as you further establish yourself, you can look into other options like index funds and Roth IRAs. You know, investments outside of your job that are still safe that still grow a lot over time. 
there's different tax advantages to these, which is why you should take advantage of as many as you possibly can. But I won't get into that in this video because I already have videos that go in depth on that type of stuff. But I can tell you this, the best way to save money is by remembering the purpose of everything you do to make money. When looking at the big picture, you have to realize that it's so much bigger than just right now. It's also about the future that you deserve. The best way to save money is by making the right decisions in the present. And that's how you guarantee money in the future, which by the way, is the entire reason behind saving money. Anyways, that's the video for today. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Reggie Bryant and this channel is all about personal finance and personal growth so you can control you, control your finances and control your life. Thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I will see you all in the next video. Stay cold.